Hi everybody and welcome. We are the Photoshop guys from the National Association of Photoshop Professionals. I want to welcome you to our special look at Photoshop CS6 for our friends here at B&H Photo. I'm Scott Kelby and joining me on the set today, Mr. Matt Kluskowski. Hey everyone. Over to my left is Pete Collins. Hey guys, how's it going? Good, good. Hey, Scott. Hi, Pete. <laughs> and also joining us over here is RC Concepcion. What's going on, Scott? What's hey, going on, everybody? So uh, a lot of cool stuff. Uh, uh, we're going to do a video, and we're going to show you our favorite features, right? How many yeah. are we covering? We're, so our top five favorite features in CS6. It's not enough. You know, <laughs> at, at the NAPP, it, it doesn't really get any bigger for us than when a new version of Photoshop comes out. So we thought we'd kind of take a minute, sit down and go over what our top five favorite features were. It's just very, very, very hard picking yeah. five <laughs> features because this, this is really a very, very robust. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and it's, it's, there's so much there for photographers. There's there for, for video shooters. There's a, a breadth of stuff in this, in this upgrade. Yeah, very cool. So, so we're gonna make Pete start, right? Yes. All right, Petey. Well, hey, one of the great new features that they put into CS6 is the whole new blur gallery. And for a photographer, this is going to be a great thing. When you have an image that you want to tweak just a little, you go over to filter, blur just like before, and you've got three new blur filters up there. They all open up into the same panel, and you can choose between field blur, iris blur, and tilt shift. And each one of them is going to give you a little bit different look in how you're going to take and emphasize focus in one area and be able to set a blur from the edges that's going to give you a nice soft feel around the edges. Now, now all of the, the controls that you're doing there, you're doing that right on screen. You're doing it right on screen real time and the nice thing is is you don't have to come over here and change the blur amounts. This little widget in the middle here, if you click on it and start dragging, it's going to increase and decrease the blur. Each one of these has an inner setting where it's totally clear, moves out to a middle transition point and goes to a full blur at, at the perimeter. Now, the great thing is I can move this around. I can even add other points if I wanted to have multiple points of clarity and have blur around the other edges. It's a great thing to play with to figure out how you can emphasize a nice center, usually around the eyes, and then have a nice creamy background smooth out from the back. That's very nice. It's also a very different way to work with Photoshop. Uh, this is the first time that they've done this kind of on-screen, you know, interactivity. Yeah. And, I, and I hope we see more of that going in the future, because yeah. I think it's a very cool thing. You, speaking of very cool things, this is a little bit of just, you know, when people talk about Photoshop magic, you're this about to see it. it. Yeah, this is it. So back in, you know, back in Photoshop CS4, they came out with content-aware scale. And that was a way to kind of like scale your photo and, and maybe bring a little bit more sky if you needed to. And, and it, um, it focused on what, it kind of knew what the important thing in your photo was. And of course, you could even tell it. You could tell in it. In case it guessed wrong. It's this person yeah. in here. Yeah, so, so you could scale a photo without scaling the person, but maybe scale the sky. In CS5, that's where it like really hit big time. I mean, it made the news where, where they came out with content-aware fill. Okay, and Content Aware Fill basically lets you just paint over an area or select an area, press a key, and it, it filled it in, and it knew what to fill it in with. So they, they enhanced that inside of CS6. What they did is they gave us, it's right with the healing brush and spot healing brush, there's one called Content Aware Move. So what Content Aware Move does, it's like, it's like the next step of Fill. So Yeah, because Fill was just, I've got something in my photo I don't want. Yeah, Fill would actually be like, I can make a selection around her. You just right. take your lasso tool and just right. do a very loose selection. And Fill would let me fill her in with whatever was around it and kind of just make her yeah, disappear from the Yeah, it looked like there was the no one in the field. Now, if you just took the Move tool and tried to move her, it's obviously, it doesn't do what we want to do. But if you take Content Aware Move and you click, you kind of get a little preview. And so you just start to drag it and you see where you want it. And once you get it right about to the place where you th think you're ready, just release. Photoshop thinks for a second and you can see it kind of just puts her over back somewhere else. Yeah, it fills in where she used to be and moves her. I mean, it's just a, it's, that's, yeah. that's amazing. But here's what's really cool about it because it's not always gonna work perfect. Like, I mean, yeah, I kind of picked, I picked the photo where it almost does. It's a little bit bright over here, but there's a couple places you might clone and heal to fix up. Well, it's just not like always, content aware fill too. It did 98% of the work yeah. in the last 2%. The cool part is, is up here under adaptation, if you don't like the way it works, like let's say I chose very loose, you're going to see, you're probably going to see some weird things happen here. Yeah, like her, her, her arm gets cut off <laughs> in a place, you know. So you can come up here and you can change it right after the fact. So once you realize it doesn't work well, you can go up and change a different adaptation setting up here. And, uh, and usually you'll find one, one of the five will usually work pretty good for you. Very nice. 
All right, I want to show you one. It's it's more than one. It's kind of a little grouping of things because it's the improvements that they made to uh, camera raw. So they, big improvements. Big improvements. Yeah. Massive improvements. I think the biggest thing is they they reworked. They went back and reworked some of the the controls. Uh, like for example, the clarity slider. Back in Photoshop CS5, if you dragged it too far, you would literally get a halo. Like mm -hmm. if I took a picture of Matt, you'd see a little black halo going around him. And, and I used to tell people in my classes, if you see the black halo, you've gone too far. Well, they re-engineered the math behind that. And now it, it can, it's so powerful it can give you a fake HDR effect, mm -hmm. right? In yeah. combination with some other sliders, but it can give you a faux HDR effect. Uh, it, it, well, Clarity does um, really work wonders on anything with a lot of texture. Yeah. So anything with texture, it brings out details. the texture, it details, it enhances. So if you're shooting like an old church or something like that, boy, you can crank up the detail uh, using Clarity, and it's much better than it's ever been before. But they've also done some other things here. The contrast slider actually now works. <laughs> it actually does something when you yeah. move it. It was very, we, we kind of avoided that in, in previous versions. We don't um, have brightness anymore. You don't have brightness anymore. You, the exposure slider now handles that. You've got shadow and highlights. So for people who are used to, uh, right here, shadow and highlights, people that are used to like level in Photoshop will feel right at home with this. Um, but I, I want to show you a little bit about it work. We have a kind of a, a really flat looking picture. Make sure it's set back to the default. Yeah, it's a, a very flat looking picture uh, because there's another feature I have not even talked about yet I want to show you. So first thing, let's just, let's show you what clarity does. I'm going to drag it way up further than you really would, but watch the image just to see what it does. See how everything kind of gets really like crisp and mm -hmm. snappier and it also affects the contrast a little bit as well because Clarity actually controls mid-tone contrast. So I'm gonna crank this way up. Now here's my problem with this is it made the buildings look a little, a little bit maybe washed out. They look better, I think, I mean I can just show you before and after here, look. The whole image, look at the sky, look at the detail in the boats and the water, everything looks quite a bit better, right? But let's do this. Let's get the adjustment brush. When you click on the adjustment brush, which allows you to just edit certain areas, you have almost all of the same sliders in just about the same order here. So you can now paint adjustments. Well, what do I want to paint? I want to paint warmer buildings over here. They just kind of look a little flat and all. So I'm going to just paint over here and look, I'm painting white balance. You've never been able to do that before. And that's one of the ones that I didn't know I wanted. Until you have until it. Until it was there. And now you realize, well, it's great. if you're I doing, can't get by without it. You're doing travel photography. You're like, you're walking down the street. You're shooting different things and all. Imagine how many times part of what you want to shoot is in the shade. Yep. Part of it's right. in the sun. And part of it's in the sun. So there, you're going to have one white balance that looks good, and then anybody in the shade is going to look blue. You've seen it a million times. Now you can go in there and make those, make the mm -hmm. two white balances match just like that. Uh, now, of course, I can also at this point add clarity and things like that, but I want to point out one more thing while we're on this brush. Noise reduction. Mm -hmm. There's a noise reduction and a moiré reduction, but we're not, you're not going to run into moiré like you do noise. So what's nice about noise is this. There is a new shadows control. Now, the shadows control, I think, is much better than recovery. The quality of opening it up is better. So when you open up the shadows a bit, it, uh, it does a better job. And as you can see, it opening just in those areas. Yeah. But now what you can do is when you open up the shadow, that's where any noise in the photo is. This was shot at 800 ISO on a D300, which is not a low noise camera by any means. So if you see noise, now you can actually go and hit new and just go and paint in noise reduction. Yep. And just so, and you would, you would really probably do this like over in these areas over here and some areas over there where you might have noise. I wanna return back to the, to the main panel here and, and I'll just show you how you would tweak this using the new sliders. So first thing is you have a little bit of clipping. Things are a little bit bright there. They're street lights, so I'm not too worried about that. But I'm gonna lower the overall exposure just a little bit. And this photo looks a little flat. Let's make it more contrasty, watch. The contrast slider actually works. <laughs> so we're gonna bring that up a little bit. Uh, I'm gonna pull back the highlights. Okay, well, and actually the highlights is really more like the, uh, the uh, recovery than shadows. Uh, but let's just open this up. But it works this a lot one, better Shadows than would, be, would be fill light yeah. from, from CS5 highlights here. And uh, let's add a little vibrance. And so look at the difference. I'm gonna go back and show you before and after. We just moved a few sliders. And yeah. in just a few seconds, wow. we, we took it from just, oh, okay, it's getting there. Yeah. If you're a photographer, camera raw, camera oh, raw by itself, just the upgrade just there. Enough is, your, is, because is at the end it. of the day, if there's something that makes your photos look better, right, which this version does over any other version of Photoshop, I think most people are willing to pay for that right there. Yeah. It makes my photos look better. The sliders look better. They all look better. I'll take it. Yeah.
There's, a, there's another one. So I think anybody, anybody that's worked with video before, you, have to go, you usually have to go learn a whole different program to work with video. And that's why, you know, because RC is going to cover this, and we were talking about it. It's like now people that are familiar with Photoshop, right. everybody's shooting DSLR video now. Now I can use the program that I kind of already know to start to work with my video. So RC, you got a, you got a quick demo yeah, on that and one? That's, yeah, that's pretty much what I was going to say. Oh, did it's I steal oh, 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 your intro? Oh. Thing of, no, no, but no, that's a good thing. I think that if it's something that that everybody's beginning to see it now. It's like, it's one of those, and I'm glad that it makes that kind of impact with everybody because photographers are out there are just shooting and shooting and shooting and they're like, eh, what am I gonna do? It sits on your computer, right? You're not you don't do any, anything with you're it. You're not making movies, you just have clip, yeah. clip, 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 because mm -hmm. Photoshop's hard enough. Do we have to go learn another program? And see, and that's the thing. It's just like, it takes it to the whole new level. And the good part about this is that they took all of the stuff that you generally don't need when you're first starting, and they've only given you things that you yeah, do, so right. you can get in and out very quickly. By the way, RC, so when I was talking about all the, the discussion RC and I had, RC had all the good points in the discussion. I'll just <laughs> let you know. Yeah, yeah, no, no, but take a look at this. Look here. Now, you can do a whole bunch of different types of videos. Like, for example, this is a video. I'm just going to go ahead and click and drag this and put it right on here. That's a high-def video. Right, that's taken in a production studio and it opens up with no problem. I don't want to work with a high dev video. I just kind of want to show you something, let's say like a home movie. What if you just have a series of home movies that sit on your iPhone, you want to string them together, you want to upload them into your computer and do something with them. How, how fast could you do that? Well, I'm going to go ahead and grab one and I'm going to throw it right in here. You'll notice that right off the bat, there's the video. I can grab it, I can click and I can scrub and do everything that I need. Performance is great with this kind of stuff. But this is where they take it kind of to the next level. Right here, you click on this drop down and you can add more media. If you click on that, now you can go inside here and I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and I'm gonna grab another piece of information. So let's say I grab that video. Once I add that, you'll see that on the right hand side here, you have two videos. Well, those videos are attached to this timeline that sits here at the bottom. So watch this, you drag, there's one video, and there's another video. Now, all you want to do here is, I don't necessarily want her kind of going away. I can just grab this couple seconds here. Watch this. If I hover my cursor right here, you get this little end marker. Click, drag. It shows you a thumbnail preview of what's happening there. Bring it right to where I want it, and automatically when you let go, it snaps and deletes all of that stuff there. I can go ahead and do this, grab another one. Snap, delete right there. Grab this at the end, snap, delete right there. Now, I can go ahead and let's say add one more media clip to this. I'll go ahead and I'll grab, let's say this one. And now, right here, is another one. So now, inside of here, I have three sets of video clips. At any point in time, if I change the order here, by dragging them up and down, it changes the order here at the bottom. All we need to do at this point is just click on this black and white section here, and watch, I can just drag cross fades right in between these two. And now from here, you can switch, cross fade, cross fade, and all of that stuff is done. You can click right here, you can add your own audio, you can put an MP3 file for a soundtrack, and once all of that's done, you can go ahead and just render your video right here. What they did is they took a lot of the power of something inside of After Effects and inside of Premiere called the Adobe Media Encoder. They made it a lot easier for people who actually don't want to know a lot of the technical yeah. details. <laughs> you don't you just want to make you a video. Wanna, yeah. You just want to do it. So in here, you have Adobe Media Encoder. Where do I want to upload it? You click on a preset. You'll find any of the <laughs> presets that you need right here. So you, let's say I want to do YouTube HD 2997. Click render, and in a very, very short amount of time, you get all of your video done. That's just scratching a tiny, tiny bit of everything that you can do with it. But the key point with all of this stuff is that it's fast. It's not something that you have to relearn another program to do. And I think that that's yeah. something that's going to really inspire photographers to kind of open the throttle on the camera and really start doing some more video work. Yeah, I that's hope so, because that's we hear that quite a bit. We do. We hear all these photographers that are shooting video. What are you doing with it? Nothing. It's just sitting on my computer. <laughs> All right, so I got I got one last quick one here for you. This one is just, it, it was around, you had to download it. You could get it for CS5. It was a secret feature. Yeah, you need, you need to know the handshake and, and where to get it from. It. And um, So you could get it before, but now they include it into CS6, and it's my, it's my favorite filter. Um, 
I find it works best on photos with lots of details. So like HDR photos, it works really good. Um, Anything that uses a lot of clarity. <laughs> yeah, things that use a lot of clarity, but even like pets and cats Land, and dogs. Landscapes. And landscapes, yeah. So it's called the oil paint filter, all right? So you just come under here to the, the filter menu, you get to oil paint, and uh, let's go ahead and fill the screen with it. But it just, I haven't touched any of the settings yet. Just take a look at what it starts to do. And these are the default settings. These are, these are yeah, the default settings. Isn't that amazing? And, and it just, it creates this oil painting look that looks a little Van Goghish right off the bat. Yeah, and you know, you know what? How long it would take to paint that? Oh! Uh. If you were to take a brush and try to do it, and you can change all the settings. You know, th this is this basically adds a texture or more of that swirly, painted look to it. This is kind of like a blur. You can see here. I can get the the little the brush strokes to be sharp, or they kind of get a little bit blurred. I can make them bigger, or I can make them smaller. And then I can bring down the detail, which again, that's almost kind of like a sharpness setting for it. I can change the angle and then the shine. This, this gives it more of a, it almost looks like a, like a bevel and emboss type of a look. Yeah, but or I can more pull like back. An, uh, a wet oil. Yeah, or I can pull back on it. But the coolest part, I mean, it, it actually, it doesn't just apply it anywhere around the photo. It finds the edges, and I think that's why I like it the best. There's some it's serious because, math going on there, isn't there? Yeah, look at it. Look at it around the, the doors and everything no, like that. It doesn't, it doesn't take the edge of the door and put it into the door. It makes sure that the edges still stay there. So Great. really, really cool little filter. You just hit OK here. I'll show you the before and after, because you kind of got to see it next to each other. But that's before. That's after. Wow. Yeah, you combine so, that with something like the mixer brush that you have yeah. and go in and just do some quick tweaking inside of that, you can have yeah. amazing, amazing Throw it on a layer mask, do it, do, it, do it with different parts of the photo, and you get yeah. some really, really that's cool results. Well, that's our look at the brand new cool things. Well, some of them so. <laughs> in Photoshop CS6. I want to thank our friends at B&H Photo for having us here today. And if you want to learn more about us, the National Association of Photoshop Professionals, the people who happen to publish... Photoshop User Magazine. You like that, huh? Uh, you can check us out. Actually, I would have you go to our Photoshop 6 Learning Center. Yes, you can find it over at photoshopuser.com slash CS6. And all the features that we told you about that we said we can't cover everything here, they're covered cover over there. there. All right, thanks, everybody. And again, thanks to our friends here at B&H. Take care. For more information, please visit us online, give us a call, or stop by our New York City Superstore. You can also connect with us on the web.